So when we are naming transition metal ionic compounds, it's going to follow the same basic format as any other metal where it's called a metal and then non-metal IDE. So we're doing that same convention. But the difference between making a bond with just a basic metal versus a transition metal is that for transition metals, you have to include their oxidation number. And the way that we do that is with the Roman numeral. So it's just the other side of how we made the bonds with those. Um, so, so let's follow the general rules above. To distinguish between multiple oxidation numbers of the same element, the formula name must indicate the oxidation number of the cation. It's a confusing way to say use a Roman numeral. The oxidation number is written as a Roman numeral in parentheses after the name of the cation. Um, to be honest, sometimes you'll see it as a Roman numeral, and I think sometimes we don't. So on the back of this, I have a bunch of practice for you, and I just give you the Roman numeral and don't put it in parentheses. I'm not that picky about that part, as long as the Roman numeral itself is there. Um, so, for example, if I'm looking at the compound Fe2O3, I can tell that it was formed by the Fe3 plus ion and the O with a minus 2 ion, um, which would tell me that the formula name is iron blank oxide. So what would the Roman numeral be if it has a 3 plus charge? 3, Roman numeral 3. The way that we can tell what their charge was originally is by basically undoing that crisscross thing. So if I look at Fe2O3, I know that this 2 that I see on iron came from oxygen, which is consistent with what I know um, from my periodic table that oxygen has a minus 2 charge. That means that the 3 would have come from iron. So let's look at this one and try the same thing. Right here, there is no subscript. Since there's no subscript, what is it implied to be? One. One, which makes sense because chlorine on my periodic table does have a minus one charge, which means that this three that's sitting on chlorine right now must have come from iron, which means that this started as Fe with a plus three charge. You see where that came from? So when we write the name for this, we still use the entire metal name just like we would up here. So I'm going to call it iron, I-R-O-N. The difference though, since iron is a transition metal, the difference is that I need to include that plus three in the name as a Roman numeral. So I'm going to do iron, one, two, three. And then my non-metal part, remember I changed the ending to IDE. So my non-metalide is going to be what in this case? Chloride. Chloride. So iron three chloride. The way that you can check and see if you named it correctly is that you should be able to go back and forth between the formula and the name. If I just called it iron chloride and I did not include the Roman numeral, then you wouldn't be able to write the formula from that because you don't have the charge given to you. So let's try this one. I have HGF2. Since after HG there is nothing written, what does that mean fluorine's charge would have been? Minus one, which makes sense because that's what it says on our periodic table. And then I have F2, which tells me that that two came from HG. So HG originally had a charge of plus two. Let me zoom that in more. What element is HG on your periodic table? Mercury. Mercury. So when I name it, I would call it mercury. And then what Roman numeral would it get? Two. And then my non-metal part, remember I have to change my ending. If F is normally fluorine, how would I change the ending? Fluoride. Fluoride.
when we look at this next one, if I don't see a subscript, what does that tell me? One. It would normally tell me one. And so this no subscript on CU looks like oxygen would have a minus one charge. But oxygen is one that has a predictable number of valence electrons, a predictable oxidation number. If I look up oxygen on my periodic table, what's its actual charge? Negative two. Negative two. So this can't be a one. We know that they must be both two because what happened is they got reduced. So you know that they match because they match here. It's a one to one ratio, but it had to have started as, I know that oxygen had a minus two charge. If I know for sure oxygen had a minus two charge and it crisscrossed down that two, then that means that whatever copper had, whatever question mark that was, had to have reduced with that two since that two isn't showing up in my final formula. You see how that worked? So I would call this one copper, what? What number though? Two, copper, two, I think I heard it. What's the last part? Oxide. So just because there is no subscript doesn't mean that it's automatically going to be one. You have to look at the anion to see if there's a charge that used to be there. So what this one would have started as was Cu2O2 that got reduced by 2. And then two more examples of this one going the other direction. If I have iron 2 oxide, that means that I'm starting with iron, which is Fe. What's its oxidation number? Plus 2. Plus two. Oxide comes from what element? Oxygen. oxygen, which is minus two. So it would be the same kind of format where I would have two and two. Fe2O2 would just reduce down to FeO. So remember that two would become the subscript on iron. This two would become the subscript on oxygen. But then it reduces. And then last one we're going to do is copper, and then this one that Miles says is not weird. It's special. The special Roman numeral mm -hmm. represents what number? Four. Four. So if it's copper, that is Cu with a plus four charge. Chloride is Cl with a minus one charge. The one crisscrosses down, the four crisscrosses down. And then my formula becomes Cu. The subscript would be a 1, but the 1 is just implied. We do not write it. And then Cl with what subscript? 4. Four. Beautiful. So notice um, it is expected that when you are writing the name for any transition metal compound, you have to include the Roman numeral. If you don't include it, it's going to be wrong because we have to be able to know what the oxidation number was in order to write the formula versus these. It is incorrect or improper to include the Roman numeral. So don't do a Roman numeral on these since you don't need them. These do need it.